Welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am Peter Yorsky, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal. And in this video tutorial, we're back with Drupal 7 and we're going to be looking at creating a store uh, node locator, uh, proximity search using views, uh, GMAP module, and location module, just like in Drupal 6, except for the new views 3, you're going to need chaos tools as well. So I've gone ahead and I've downloaded GMAP, views, and chaos tools. And in terms of location module, the one caveat is right now, there's only um, location module 7.x dash, I believe it's 3.x, um, and that's a port of the Drupal 6 version. The Drupal 7 version, which they're creating from scratch, is actually the 4.x version, and you can't get that on Drupal.org yet. You have to get it through Git. Uh, so I've gone ahead and I've downloaded that. If you're not familiar with Git, I highly recommend you get on it. Um, unfortunately, I won't be showing you how to use it in this video tutorial, but there's a great video tutorial on the DrupalCon Chicago um, conference. They uh, they recorded uh, how to use Git, except that the sound quality is terrible, uh, but it'll help you uh, set it up and show you how to use it. So that said, let's dive right into it. Um, I haven't enabled anything because I wanted to show you specifically what we need because location and GMAP both come with a lot of different modules that you don't necessarily need. So we want GMAP, we want GMAP location, we want location, we don't care about add another. We don't care about all that stuff. We want node locations. Let's go ahead and save. We might not need uh, location CCK. We'll test it out. Great, so now that that's set up, uh, let's go ahead and we'll configure our, and they've moved that. So let's go into GMAP. So we need an API key. So the one thing that you want to make sure is enabled is auto zoom. This will actually zoom in on the marker. Uh, so if you have four markers across the country, it'll actually zoom in across the country. Uh, if you have one in a specific city, it'll zoom in on that specific city. Make sure you use that. Um, I totally forgot I checked it off one time. I couldn't figure out where it was. And somebody asked me for help and took me forever to find it. Uh, so there we go, our default map. Let's go back. So we have to go to GMAP location. And here you can change the specific macro that you're using, uh, if it's a user map, as well as a node map. I'm not gonna change any of that, but I thought I'd show you, uh, just in case you wanna change the defaults. So nothing for me to save. Okay, so now we'll go to configuration, content authoring, we have location, and we've got some things to set up in here. Okay, so if you wanted to allow users to use a Google map, you would check that off, uh, and allow them to actually set the, the location of the thing of their location. Let's take a look at bundles. That content type. And we're going to name this a location. Uh, no locations for our store no locator. Name. Okay, optional. Don't want it on the front page. Display is fine. Now, our locative information. You definitely want a location. Maximum is going to be one. Collapsed. Location name. We are already calling our title that. We're going to require a street. We're going to allow additional. We're going to require, 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 require. We do not want to collect coordinate choosers. And for our high, we're going to high coordinates all the way up from the bottom here. And we'll leave the nest. So we don't need location name. So we'll go ahead and save and add fields. Okay, so you can add some other fields if you wanted to. But let's go back and we've got. Uh, where we content authoring location. So map links, shouldn't have anything to change here, but just wanna confirm that we're set up. So Canada, we're using Google Maps, that's great. So for geocoding, you usually have to set this up. So we're gonna go down to Canada, I want Google Maps. Obviously, if you're using the United States, you're gonna choose uh, Google Maps for that as well. Save configuration, right? And there shouldn't be anything on the location utilities. If you need to clear the province cache or any other supported countries, that's where you would do it. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll clear support a country just because we enabled one. Okay, great. So now that that's set up, we have our content type. Let's go ahead and we will add some content. Now we're going to add some content and I'm pretty sure it's not going to actually show us our location. We'll have to enable a block, but let's find out. So we'll call this Pete's store. Right. So location information is gonna come from here. Oops. Uh, 
And we'll go ahead and save. That's great. In the 7.3 version, if you're using that, uh, the province get wiped out if you added that. So like I said, we obviously don't have our GMAP here. So we're going to go to our blocks. And you can see I'm using the Bartik uh, theme, which is a pretty great theme if I don't mind me saying. So we'll add a location map to the content. Go ahead and save that. Let's go back to our content. And let's hope that this works. And there you go. Now we have our location and our location. If you are using location CCK field, what you can do is, at least with the 7.3 version, although it's a little bit unstable, you would enable the CCK field and then display, you could actually display the address information along with a map. The problem with that is you need a patch to apply to 7.3 because the location module isn't actually saving no data, uh, but it will show you the map. So it's not loading it in properly. So your location would be blank, but you'd have an accurate map. That's why I'm using the 7.4 version. Um, if you want to use 7.3 and apply the patch, by all means, go ahead. So um, that said, we now have our location. We have a map. Let's go ahead and create a store no load cater using views. So we're going to add a view. View name, store locator. Cool thing of views with 3.3 is it creates it. Uh, we'll enable a uh, description show um, a specific node locator for users to search nodes within a proximity. Right? So we are going to show contents, it should be content uh, of type location. Page said that's going to be store and locator. That's great. 10 of choose fields. 10 per page. That's fine. We'll continue and edit. Um, if you're wondering about the different view uh, or different look, that's because this is views three. Uh, I think it's a great improvement. Uh, it's out on the jury whether or not that's true. So um, what we need to do is we need to add a filter first off. You see we have a lot of what we need already set up. So let's go ahead and we will add location, distance proximity. And we're going to choose a postal code. We're going to assume the default country because we're only using Canada. And I'm not sure if I set that up. So let's go ahead and we'll choose it. And we'll just default it to Canada. Okay. What else? Kilometers because we're in Canada. Hit apply. Okay, so now we have our, no we don't, because we have to expose it. So we're gonna expose that. There we go, we're gonna require it. And we'll go ahead and hit apply. Great, there we go, there's our exposed filter. Um, so we'll use our title, that's all we really need. I mean, you could set up a whole bunch more if you wanted to. And I'm just confirming, we don't need any relationships content. Yeah, okay, we're good. Um, yes, yeah, so I might as well show you. We'll create an attachment. So let's go ahead and this is not gonna be an unformatted list. We're gonna create this as a GMAP. We'll hit apply. Great. So this will, Location sorts, yeah, that's fine. Single, yeah. Hit apply. We're good with that. Okay. Now, because it's an attachment, we're going to attach it to the page, and we'll do it before. It is going to inherit exposed filters. Make sure you have this checked off. Okay, and we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and hit save. And now we are going to go to select store dash locator. Interesting, two maps. Ah, because what we've done is we've chosen GMAP for both. What we need to do is make this unformatted, apply, Attachment, yep, gradient error, attachment. 
not unformatted. We're going to choose this attachment override, choose this GMAP, apply, great, we'll just confirm page stay the same, unformatted, we'll go ahead and hit save. So now that we have our view set up, um, we could go ahead and we could test it and perform a postal code search and see what results return. However, we would never actually get anything accurate. The reason for this is when you set up the location module, it will create a table in your database called zip codes, but it won't actually populate that with any zip codes. And the reason for that is because in any country you could have, you know, 700,000 zip codes, um, and it would be guessing which zip codes you're actually going to be using, whether or not you're using the United States, uh, the UK, Australia, whatever. Um, so what they'll do instead is, if you look at the actual module itself, you'll see there's a folder called database. In there, you have the tables for the different countries. So you can import those yourself, depending upon which country you're going to be using the zip code search for. Canada obviously isn't included in this, so you'll have to go to drupal.org and uh, download that, which I've done. Um, so in order to actually pull in our zip codes into the database, you can use a simple query. Um, so from the command line, I would go ahead and mysql u for a user, my user's root for the for the database, dash p, I don't provide a password, it will prompt me for one, but then you also have dash h for your host, so mine is a local host, my table is Drupal 7, and I'm telling it to import zip codes.ca.mysql. And the reason why this works is because I would actually be running it from the specific folder. So if you were doing this on yours, you would navigate to, um, looking back at this, you would navigate to location slash database and run the, the query from there. If not, you would just specifically define the full path. I'm not going to run this right now because it will take a long time. I believe it took about 20 or 30 minutes to get all 700,000 uh, postal codes in for Canada. But with that, the next thing that you're going to have to do before you can actually test things out is you're going to go to content authoring, location, location utilities. We have to clear the cache before we can actually use this. So if you don't do this and you try to test out your postal code search, it won't work and you'll think it's broken. So two things, clear the province cache and clear the supported countries list. Now, if we go into our store-locator, which obviously is the wrong path because I didn't put a slash, and we'll test out our postal code search. Um, and in doing so, I'm going to show you a few errors that are easy to get and the reason why you're going to want to add some form validation to make sure that your users aren't totally confused. So L4C 5A7 is a valid postal code in Canada. I should hit apply. I'm going to choose this down to one. Hit apply. And I shouldn't get any results. But you'll see here I'm still getting a result. And that's because L4C 5A7 is not a valid postal code compared to the postal codes that are in your database. They all have a space, so you need to make sure you have a space. I have another bot, uh, module development tutorial that shows you how to add the form validation for this, so I highly recommend you check that out. It is based upon Drupal 6, but form validation hasn't changed through Drupal 7 with Hook Form Alter, so it should still work. Um, now if I go ahead and I hit apply, adding my space, I get no results, which is accurate. Um, the one caveat to this that I've noticed and uh, testing things out, if I go L4K4B4, which is the actual postal code of the node that we chose, I should see it because it's in one kilometer distance. However, I'm not getting any results. If I up this to four or anything above, I get a result. Um, I haven't nailed down why that is, but if you're you know, hell bent on using this right away and you wanna make sure that's accurate, you could use the hook form alter to change this from an input to predefined uh, select values for a user, so five, 10, 15 kilometers, um, and then that should work. Um, they wouldn't necessarily have an issue because you could add in 10 and you would always get that from that postal code. Unfortunately, that's the only solution that I have right now. Um, it would require some more testing and I thought I'd, I'd rather get this out for, for users. It might just be this specific postal code, I'm not sure, but if you run into the similar issue, um, that's the solution that I would recommend. So I hope this video tutorial helped. Um, try to update some of the information, show you how to do this in Drupal 7. I'm going to try to keep the Drupal 7 module tutorials coming along, uh, but there are still some valid Drupal 6 tutorials that, uh, that are useful, so those will be coming as well. Don't worry if you're not on Drupal 7 yet. Um, as always, leave a comment uh, on the video tutorial page. Let me know if these are helping you, and uh, I'll be sure to try to get back to any feedback, uh, any questions that are out there.